Hi there, Darren Loverty here again. Um, today we're going to have a quick chat about workplace well-being. Uh, it seems to be uh, a bit of a buzz at the moment around the whole subject. In the last two or three years it's really, really grown and um, all the media seem to be talking about it. But is well-being in the workplace, is it a new thing? Or is it something which has been around for a long time? Well, there's a good example of this. If we go back to the late 1900s, the Cadbury family, uh, they had a uh, production facility in Birmingham and they moved it six miles south of Birmingham out to the country to a place called Bournebrook Hall. And they created a community there in a village called Bourneville, which is kind of where the dark chocolate got its name. They were very um, concerned about the well-being of their employees and so they wanted to create community, they wanted to create a lifestyle and they treated their employees with a lot of respect. Um, they paid them high wages, um, they built 313 houses for them, they gave them pension schemes, um, they provided a medical service for them, um, they built parks and they built recreation areas. And as a result of that they then actively encouraged swimming, walking, outdoor sports and further to that they then built a football pitch, they built a hockey pitch, um, they built several bowling greens, they went on to build a fishing lake and also they went on to build a, um, a swimming lido. So all of that facilities, all those facilities were uh, free of charge to all of their workers and to their families. So we can learn a lot from a business that was focused on well-being well over a hundred years ago. And they were doing a lot more than most companies are today. And I suppose you could argue that in those days for that particular family, money was no object. And today money is an object and it is difficult. But if money was no object, then I think that most HR people would want to provide all of those things if they could. Um, if you look at the well-being in the workplace today, a lot of it's been driven by the financial pressures. If we look at since the financial crisis, we've had very, very subdued pay rises and we've had rises in the cost of living. So people's disposable income has definitely gone down um, as a proportion of their pay in the last eight or nine years. And that's creating unhappiness. We're also seeing where employees resign and move on. They're not always necessarily replaced. Sometimes that the roles are absorbed into other people's jobs. So people are working for less money in real terms in a, in a, in a situation where the cost of living has gone up and they're working harder than ever because they might be doing more than just their own job. So today, the zeitgeist seems to be around financial and psychological well-being. And if we can't provide all of the things that the Cabri family provided, um, those sort of things help treat the cause and the effect. If we can't deal with all treating the effect, then maybe we could do some things towards helping treat the cause. And if the cause is the financial squeeze and the financial anxiety and financial worry are driving a lot of the unhappiness in the workplace, maybe a good place to start is to actually uh, improve the financial savvy of employees and create uh, a, a sense of financial certainty for them. Maybe also t you know, a sense of financial freedom. If they've got that, then they'll have a resilience and they'll be able to deal with life challenges much better. Just a thought. Thank you.